Now, the business news we're also tracking on the show today. Saudi Arabia, the world's biggest oil producer, grew slow in the first quarter of 2023 compared to the last quarter. Saudi Arabia, fully known as the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, possesses one of the largest oil reserves in the world, which takes care of the country and its citizens. But despite it having the largest economy in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia still needs help with water. How do they cope with their water problem? How do they intend to solve it for the better living of their citizens? These questions and more will be answered in this video. Middle East countries are mainly composed of deserts. Even countries with varied vegetation still have deserts scattered in them, which would explain their water problems. And Saudi Arabia is one such Middle East country. The country caters to the needs of over 36 million people, including non-citizens. Yet an essential commodity like water remains a constant concern. The demand for water keeps increasing annually, putting the country at risk of running out of water within the next two decades. The area also gets low rainfall. Saudi Arabia is known for its arid climate and limited rainfall. Rainfall in Saudi Arabia is generally scarce and irregular and most common during winter, typically from November to April. Still, most of Saudi Arabia receives little to no rainfall during the summer months. To further compound the problem, there are predictions of lower rainfall in the future and increasing temperatures which is a direct result of climate change. Naturally, the annual average rainfall varies widely across different regions of Saudi Arabia. The coastal areas receive around 100 to 200 millimeters, 4 to 8 inches of annual rainfall, while the interior desert areas may receive about 50 millimeters, 2 inches, or even less in some years. Now, imagine if it's even lower rainfall being predicted. Because the country is a desert-dominated land with no natural rivers or lakes, and factors such as rapid population growth, urbanization, industrialization, and agricultural needs, making it one of the highest per capita water consumers in the world, Saudi Arabia has had to search for alternative ways to get water to sustain its people. Let's discuss the alternative ways Saudi Arabia provides its citizens with water. One of these ways is buying water from others. They import water through tankers and pipelines from neighboring countries. The purchase of water is essential to supplement its domestic supply and ensure adequate water resources for its population and agriculture. Still, even though the government imports water, government subsidies have considerably reduced the amount of money paid by residents of the country to acquire it for domestic use. Since the government bears most of the cost of the water, the citizens' water consumption began to increase till they became some of the world's highest consumers. An average Arab utilizes an average of 350 liters of water per person per day, more than double the equivalent in Europe, which is approximately 130 liters per person per day. Water conservation is another method of providing sustainable water to the Saudi Arabian government. Recognizing the challenges of water scarcity, Saudi Arabia has implemented various water conservation measures. These include public awareness campaigns, water pricing reforms, and regulations to control water usage in various sectors. The Saudi government has been working on reducing water consumption in agriculture by promoting more efficient irrigation techniques, introducing drought-resistant crops, and reducing the cultivation of water-intensive crops. Agriculture takes up about 80% of Saudi Arabia's water usage, resulting from a government program that started in the late 1970s and 1980s to achieve food self-sufficiency. They decided to cut their food exports, plant and raise all the produce we need. Unfortunately, they don't have enough water resources to make this a reality. The government provided some cities with pumps and energy to order their plans to fruition, enabling farmers to extract underground water for agricultural use. Even though these plans were good, they didn't have good execution, and the techniques available at the time were not advanced and involved flooding a large mass of land, which caused an uproar and a backlash among the citizens. Despite all the challenges, the agricultural sector experienced a boom, with Saudi Arabia emerging as one of the world's leading wheat producers. Another challenge with that is that the production of wheat takes a large amount of water, with an average of 1,000 tons of water to produce a single ton of wheat. 
The numbers don't seem to add up, and it doesn't seem advisable to continue. But the Saudis kept at it, even gaining international recognition for the drastic shift from being an importer to an exporter. However, the water problem is back in recent years, which has made the government put the self-sufficiency plan on hold. The water problem is fast escalating into a crisis, and even the desalination process seems like an inadequate remedy. What is desalination, and how does it come about? Desalination is another method of water sustainability adopted by the Saudi government. It's a water purification technique that involves removing salt and other impurities from seawater or brackish water to produce fresh water. This process is commonly used in areas where fresh water resources are limited or where the demand for fresh water outweighs its supply. A typical definition of Saudi Arabia, won't you say? Desalination typically involves either distillation or membrane filtration. Distillation desalination uses heat to evaporate the water, leaving the salt and other impurities behind. The evaporated water is then condensed to produce fresh water. On the other hand, membrane filtration desalination uses semi-permeable membranes to separate the salt and other impurities from the water, allowing only fresh water to pass through. The process is usually used as a last resort because although it can provide a reliable source of fresh water, it's energy intensive and expensive to implement and maintain. However, technological advancements and increasing demand for fresh water have led to ongoing improvements in desalination processes, making it a viable option in some regions. With Saudi's desperate need for a source of fresh water and their extensive water needs for domestic and industrial purposes, they've become the world's largest user of desalination technology. Saudi Arabia has more than 35 desalination plants in operation, providing a significant portion of the country's fresh water supply, producing over 3.5 billion cubic meters of fresh water. The desalination plants in Saudi Arabia use various technologies, such as reverse osmosis and multi-stage flash distillation to produce fresh water from seawater. Over the years, the kingdom has been investing in technology, and as demand increased, each plant increased production. For example, Jabal II, one of the kingdom's most prominent water desalination plants that serve Riyadh and Dubai, increased its annual production capacity by roughly 30% to 380 million cubic meters in 2021, from under 300 million cubic meters. A company, Saline Water Conversion Corporation, SWCC, a government corporation in Saudi Arabia that specializes in seawater desalination and bringing fresh water to various regions of the country, was put in charge of monitoring the desalination plants and processes. It plays a significant role in meeting the country's water demands and ensuring water sustainability. SWCC utilizes advanced technologies and has a wide range of desalination plants across the country. Not only did the desalination produce fresh water in billions of gallons, but it also produced valuable byproducts. On generating 2.2 billion cubic meters of water, 47 million megawatts per hour of electricity was generated as a byproduct, which is also helpful for its citizens. An ever-increasing demand for fresh water persists, and some experts even believe that by 2040, 4.5 billion cubic meters of water will be needed annually. As many countries use this technology, which presents many advantages for Saudi Arabia and worldwide, it still poses some challenges. A study about the negative environmental impacts of desalination shows that the cons outweigh the pros. The sheer amount of water needed by different countries in the world has made many countries go through the route of desalination, creating several desalination plants worldwide, amounting to nearly 16,000. Many of these plants contribute to the generation of large amounts of waste and toxic chemicals, posing harm to the planet and its inhabitants. As the plants produce several million cubic meters of fresh water alongside electricity, these desalination plants also produce a proportionate amount of brine, a substance with incredibly high salt concentration. When seawater has been processed and desalinated, 
it leaves behind material called brine waste, which is typically high in salt content and may contain other chemicals depending on its origin. Upon study, it was discovered that the previously estimated brine concentration was less than what was found, with a salt concentration of 5% higher than the typical salt water. The challenge emerges when it's time to dispose of the brine waste, as proper management is crucial to prevent environmental pollution and ensure the conservation of fresh water resources. If not managed correctly, brine discharge can harm marine life and affect water quality in the surrounding area. Yet, many desalination plants release it into natural bodies of water, leading to adverse effects like reducing oxygen levels in the surrounding waters. When these situations arise, the salt concentrations are double and the alkalinity of the water increases. Sea creatures would need to consume considerable amounts of water to compensate for the elevated salt content in their environment. Fish have different ways to get rid of excess salt, including sharks that expel it from their bodies through specific glands. Also, seabirds have organs under their eyes that expel excess salt from their blood, but when the salt water gets too much, they can still die. Not only does desalination harm the environment, but it's also costly. It's capital intensive, costing billions of dollars for the running of the plants and also costing a lot of barrels of fuel per day. The desalination process requires substantial amounts of energy, which is why Saudi Arabia consumes up to 1.5 million barrels of oil per day to fuel its desalination plants. This number is enormous and surpasses even the entire daily oil consumption of the UK. What further steps are being put in place to balance the situation? To remedy this, the Middle Eastern countries affected mainly by desalination have embarked on a venture by collaborating with Eol Water. This French water company specializes in developing innovative wind turbine technologies that harness wind power to produce clean drinking water to test a wind turbine that generates water. After creating a unique solution called the WMS-1000, a self-sufficient wind turbine that can generate up to 1,000 liters of water per day from the humidity in the air. Tests for the prototype began and have been yielding a pretty impressive daily output of 500 to 800 liters of potable water extracted from the desert air, enough to provide water for a village or town of 2,000 to 3,000 people. Tibor Yanin, an EO marketing director, expressed confidence in the technology, stating that the technology could enable rural areas to become self-sufficient in terms of water supply. He also expressed that in Abu Dhabi, the company had demonstrated the capability to produce substantial amounts of water from air with humidity levels of 15 to 20 percent. EOL Water was established in 2008, and the idea was conceived by the founder Mark Barrett back in 1997 while living in the Caribbean and working as an engineer facing a lack of access to fresh water and tired of relying on bottled water. In explaining the technology and technique, Yannick, the firm's marketing director, said that the technology first generates electricity in the traditional manner of a wind turbine, enabling the entire water generating system to function. The next day, she sees air sucked in through the nose of the turbine via a device known as an air blower. All air trapped during the procedure is directed through an electric cooling compressor behind the propellers. The contraption extracts humidity from the air, creating condensed and collected moisture. The water gathered at this stage is then transferred down a series of stainless steel pipes specially modified to aid the water production process to a storage tank in the turbine's base. Once collected, the water is filtered and purified before it's ready for use and consumption. The water production level depends on the region's humidity, temperature, and wind speeds at a particular time. Barrow devised the system to collect condensation from his air conditioner, which prompted him to combine the idea with a wind turbine, envisioning its application for off-grid communities. He further emphasized the interest in the technology's potential to benefit remote communities in the Middle East, stating that in the Middle East, the focus primarily lies on what the technology can offer to isolated communities. In addition to the benefits of the technology to underdeveloped countries and countries with low freshwater sources, it can also serve as an investment. 
Desalination and the new water turbine technologies are great ways to provide water for its citizens. But the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia still has to go further to meet its water demands. By doing this, it has had to adopt other innovative methods in obtaining water. Another primary source of water in Saudi Arabia has been vast underground reservoirs called aquifers. In areas where surface water is scarce or unreliable, groundwater from aquifers has been a lifeline for communities and economic activities. The project began in the 1970s, when the government began drilling tens of thousands of deep tube wells in promising areas to cater to agricultural, domestic, and industrial water needs. As a result, these measures are essential for meeting the growing water demands of cities, industries, and the country's overall development. As a result of the arid land in Saudi Arabia, even though there isn't enough rainfall, they experience bouts of flooding. These flash floods occur when the arid land cannot take the water from the rainfall, leading to excessive runoff. This would be a disadvantage, but this resourceful kingdom constructed dams over 500, collecting over 20 billion cubic feet of runoff yearly in their reservoirs. To ensure proper accountability, as every drop of water is precious in this desert kingdom, the dam water is diverted mainly for agricultural purposes. It's distributed through extensive networks of irrigation canals. The water revitalizes large areas of previously unused fertile land. And since most of the water used in the country is for agriculture, they can also divert reclaimed water for the purpose. Water reclamation or reuse involves treating wastewater to a standard suitable for specific non-potable uses, such as irrigation, industrial processes, and environmental restoration. Presently, Saudi Arabia has set a target of recycling up to 40% of the water used for domestic purposes in pursuit of the goal. In major urban areas and industrial centers such as Riyadh and Jeddah, working recycling plans have already been put in place. The recycled water obtained from these plants is then employed for irrigation in agricultural processes. The Saudi government is doing all it can to ensure that its people are well served. Yet the commitment to better sustainable water practices is not limited to only the government. The citizens are also a big part of it, and they have a chance to show their commitment when Abdul Rahman Al Fadli, Minister of Environment, Water and Agriculture, launched the Katra program aimed at a drastic reduction of water use. The minister proposed reducing daily per capita consumption from 263 liters to 200 liters by 2020 and 150 liters by 2030. With its population of about 36 million people, Saudi Arabia is the world's third largest per capita consumer of water, after the United States and Canada, with the United States having more than triple Saudi Arabia's population. To show dedication to the cause, the program has a website where the citizens can log on and pledge their commitment to raising water awareness, sustaining water resources, and optimizing them through rationalization. It's fantastic and worth commending how a desert country is one of the largest water consumers per capita. It's a commendable feat, but if it continues, it could become a huge problem. Let's examine some facts, shall we? It's no longer news that there's virtually no surface water in Saudi Arabia, and the groundwater is being depleted very fast with aquifers. Desalination on a large scale is currently providing for most of the country's water needs, but with the challenges concerning it, there's a high probability that the technique might not last for long. Regardless of all these uses, the demand for industrial and domestic water is still growing, and at the same time, Saudi Arabia has one of the highest levels of per capita water consumption in the world. All of these are facts, but here's another not so pleasant fact. Water production at the needed rate is not feasible, and the constant strain will only slowly push the country into a severe water shortage. Although sad, this is not new or impossible. In 2018, Cape Town almost ran out of water, and bringing it even closer, the state of California experienced a severe water shortage in the early 20th century. This shortage led to the construction of the Los Angeles Aqueduct to bring water from the Owens Valley 
over 200 miles away. It also prompted Californians to change their behaviors and develop new technologies and devices that optimized water use, leading to a fantastic reduction in water use by almost 25%. A difference between California and Saudi Arabia now is that Saudi Arabia has time to plan for the future and create more sustainable water processes or develop on what they already have. Various warnings and alerts have been directed at Saudi Arabia to help them realize the dangers of the continuous overuse of water. They already have various processes, and some only require better implementations. Which processes can Saudi Arabia implement to help it conserve and reduce water usage? Remember to like and subscribe to this channel for more updates.